Great. Well, I'll, I'll make a start as a sort of start to this massive sort of topic, which are, as I'll emphasise the introduction, as people have emphasised, and not sort of formal training elements of this. As Sammy said, I'm Dr. Peter Craig, and I'm a research fellow in ethics, legislation, engagement, with the future food beacon of excellence at the University of Nottingham, and um, uh, been doing some work on developing tools to help with ethical engagement, one of which we'll be using later on in, in the interactive sessions. But I, through this, I'm just going to give you an introduction to some of the things you might want to think about in relation to the ethics of research. So just a a brief outline of the structure of the talk, which should ne next sort of 15, 20 minutes or so. So first of all, we're going to have some sort of discussion of what is ethics. Um, and what will come out of that is a central question of what ought I do as the ethics. And so, and there's various ways of thinking about this, but for the sort of pra pragmatics of ethics of research, this will now focus on what ought I do as a researcher and we'll look from your individual project potentially to more widely. And this will be divided into three areas research ethics reviews about your individual project, research integrity, which is sort of all about trustworthy and high quality research, your project within wider good research practice, and responsible research and innovation, responsible innovation, your work and its place within the world and um, its desire, its sort of societal desirability amongst other things. And um, Sammy will give you more details about research ethics review in a subsequent um, presentation. As we've mentioned before, brief introduction, these principles cover the potentially all research from social science humanities across the sort of the breadth of it so um for your specific project specific sort of ethical um issues in relation to it you'll need to find out more um from university and get the relevant training accordingly according to the sort of particular needs you have so moving on to the first uh question so what is ethics i think I would imagine, hope that we all have some sort of lay sort of gut feeling about what ethics is. And I imagine it revolves around things being good or bad, right or wrong, and sort of moral questions about whether things are ethically ethical or not. To, to pin this down for the purposes of the talk, um, I've sort, sort out a couple of um, definitions here. One from the Oxford English Dictionary of ethics is the codes of conduct or moral principles recognised in a particular profession, sphere of activity, relationship or other context or aspect of human life. This is one of the definitions of ethics. And we'll see that context or aspect of human life, um, sphere of activity research in this case. Another sort of definition of ethics are well-founded, importantly to be well-founded, well-founded standards of right or wrong that describe what humans ought to do from the Marcula Centre for Applied Ethics. And the, the links are there, which you have to sort of look at later in your leisure. So I choose to focus on the question of what ought what humans ought to do, what ought I do, or how should I act? And I think this would prepare you to answer questions from supervisors, from colleagues, from examiners potentially, of why did you do it like this? And then you can provide some justification. Um, I can't give you an answer to this, but I'm just gonna briefly introduce a number of sort of um, domains of work that give you ways of thinking about this. And this will hopefully enable you to think more widely away from your individual work on the lab in front of the computer screen to think about the the ethics or what ought you do um, in relation to your research. And as I mentioned, each research area has its own challenges, importance, can't cover them here. This is give you a general introduction and some general principles that we're talking about. So this is a sort of a very brief sketch of ethics overall, deciding on what I ought to do, approaches to ethics. So this tends to be sort of roughly um, split into three areas. So meta-ethics and moral philosophy, that's particularly the sort of the philosophical end of it, which we're not going to be talking about here, the sort of the nature of ethical thought and how we decide um, on what that is. So it's the very more abstract, detached elements. Normative ethics moves more towards what I should do, the norms of the behaviour, and, and that's all about um, looking at ways of deciding what sort of course of action or how I should decide what to do in a more abstract sense. The way it comes into relation to research is with applied ethics, so which I characterize as what should I do in certain circumstances? And there's fields which have been developed, uh, particular sort of something ethics tend to be phrased as, so for example, bioethics, medical ethics, so the relationship between um, doctors and patients, for example, and our particular interest, the ethics of research. So to skip those first two for sort of reasons of time, um, then focus more on what ought I do in terms of applied ethics. So as I mentioned, there's medical ethics, business ethics, and I'll talk more a bit more about a particular approach to bioethics, because this sort of underpins a lot of the thinking about um, research ethics and the ethics of research. So bioethics, the application of ethics to medicine, healthcare, and biology, so living, living organisms and living things. And 
within the bioethics, there's a particular approach called principalism, which um, underpins and can be useful sort of, I find it a useful underpinning for um, values which um, give you some guidance as to what you should try and do and how you should, what you should aim at. And these are prima facie valuable values which are non-absolute, so they're not, they're not sort of um, black and white, and they're taken at face value until proven otherwise. They're sort of there as a guide. So the, the four principles from principalism from sort of the history of bioethics are beneficence, hope to do good within your research, within this non-maleficence, avoid doing harm, respect um, pe people through respecting their autonomy and um, treat, treat all fairly or with, with justice. So they're sort of crystallized things of reference points and values for how you might judge what I ought to do through applied ethics. So moving on to the ethics of research, what ought I do as a researcher? I'm gonna sort of talk briefly about three different areas. Research ethics review, which Sammy will talk more about the pragmatics of later. Research integrity and responsible innovation, responsible research and innovation, which sort of um, overlap quite closely. And they are, this is not solely an individual thing. You have responsibilities as a researcher to do these certain things, but your institution have responsibilities to you, so does funders. Um, so it's, it's not just a one-way street within this. And the, the next few slides will give you an introduction to these concepts, only a very brief introduction um, for the time we have available here. The first starting point could be and um, with a university code of conduct, which sort of summarizes all the things of what ought I do, I ought to read the code of conduct and do what it says within that. So that's a sort of a simplistic thing. I've given the example here of the universities of Nottingham's code of research conduct and research ethics. Um, your university and your institution will have similar documents. So as a starting point, it would be a good place to go and um, look for that and see, um, see what that says for the context of your particular institution. Although I imagine that um, a lot of the content will be very similar to the one for Nottingham. And you can see just from the contents list, it covers things like uh, research conduct, the use of research data and personal data, for example, intellectual property, um, supervision, that sort of thing, um, research involving human participants, uh, things like human tissue, EDI, um, occluded or covert research, for example. So it gives you an idea of the huge breadth of things within the guidance um, within that code of conduct. So that would be a starting point for you to go and, um, and look at for the one for your institution, or you can find the one um, for Nottingham at the link at the link there. And this sort of brings together all the things I'm going to be talking about into one code of conduct, one document to help you guide you in your your ethical research practice. This is um, my conception of the sort of the three sort of things I'm going to be talking about here. It's almost like there's three sort of nested, interlinked. Um, uh, ways to think about and look towards sort of the ethics of research. So we have your individual project, the thing you want to be doing, and that is sort of the focus of that is the research ethics review. So getting that independently assessed so that you can have um, a favourable ethical opinion to go and, and conclude your, your work. This is situated within uh, the sphere of research integrity, which is about how you produce high quality trusted research, what ought you do to, to do that. So we'll talk a little bit about that in terms of how you make your research sort of so other people can rely on it, can be trusted and can people can benefit from the, the, the results and the work that you've done. And again, more widely, this um, sits within the place of research in society, which comes under the banner of responsible innovation, responsible research and innovation. And this, this um, gives you some indication about uh, how research and innovation can be made to be societally desirable and um, can help uh, help the society that it ultimately serves. So I'm gonna go through these um, three areas in a little bit more detail, some introductions in the next few slides. So what ought I do in terms of research ethic, ethics review? To broadly characterize this, this is the um, submitting the plan for your research to an independent, independent panel to be ethically reviewed. And although it will, may well vary across the universities, this tends to be, in my experience, research ethics and panels, they can be at departmental level, and then there's the next level of faculty and also university levels, but also other bodies that you might come into contact with from your research. So for example, the NHS or charities would also have their ethical um, review boards who would um, be able to oversee research depending on the need of that. And um, according to the sort of links and documents here, these 
boards are supposed to be independent, competent, so able to access this. They're there to facilitate research, not sort of act as barriers, and they're there to operate in a transparent and accountable way. They tend to focus on um, research which involves human participants, which includes their data, their tissue, and sort of so it may not be that you're actually talking to people, but you may use human data, which needs um, review. But also, for example, if your research would involve animal participants, there are particular provisions to for animal welfare ethical review boards, for example, which would need to oversee research that. And as I say, Sammy will talk about more of the pragmatics of how you go about making these applications in the following talk. So just to give you some key elements of the focus of these. So avoidance of the harm from the research that could be harm to the participants or harm to yourself as a researcher through what you're going to be doing to ensure that um, the parties, anyone who participates in this, their consent is voluntary and informed. So they know what they're letting themselves in for. Basically, it gives you an overview of the research planning, the data management and data protection of what you're going to be collecting and um, looks at the research risk assessment of the um, what potential sort of risks might occur as part of the research. So hopefully the majority of projects would be minimum risk and able to go ahead quite easily, but others might have might need more mitigating factors put in, in place. And ultimately what you're hoping for is what's known as a favourable ethical opinion, whereas the independent board will say, yes, we, we give a favourable ethical opinion, which will enable you to go ahead and um, proceed with your work. Um, so there's more detail there. Um, from the sort of UK Research Integrity Office by the link there. As I say, Sammy will give you more details about the nuts and bolts of this later. So moving on to the next um, sphere, what ought I do? Talking about research integrity. So to, it's, there's no specific sort of universal definition of what research integrity is, although these details will help you. I consider it to be sort of high quality trusted research. I can trust this research, I can rely on its results because it has been done with integrity. And the, the details here are from, taken from the Concord Act to Sport Research Integrity, which has been signed up to by Universities UK, which were um, a body representing the majority of universities within the UK. And it sets out responsibilities for researchers, employers and funders of research. So this gives you an idea of what research integrity is, what the sort of standards to produce the high quality trusted research is. So just to briefly go over the commitments, so high standards of rigour and integrity. So Honesty in research, rigour, so careful and thorough within this. Transparent and open communication, both probably within scientific um, communities and with the public. Care and respect for yourself, for the community you're doing with it, for the world and resources that you're using. And accountability to sort of be responsible for the conduct and um, outputs and of, your, of your work. This needs to um, adhere to ethical, legal and professional frameworks, obligations and standards. And these will vary across the different fields of research that, um, that this covers. And that's oh, right. And um, as I say, it's also the cultural element to um, research integrity. So the culture based on good governance, so good management, best practice, and support for the development of researchers. So there's a culture there to support you in this work as well. Research misconduct is potentially something that sort of might sort of be uh, a, a most well known element of research integrity, which is basically where things go wrong or people do things that are not within the accepted practice. And these include famously the sort of FFP fabrication, making things up, falsification, inappropriately manipulating research processes, plagiarism, which I'm sure you're uh, um, aware of, so using other works without permission, or things failure to meet obligations, these would all be considered um, misconduct and we need to be dealt with appropriately. Um, um, but it's important to point out there's not honest errors or differences in research methodology. So there's sort of a lot of consideration of what actually, ca what actually um, counts as research misconduct and um, needs to be worked out in relation to the, the research um, environment itself. And as it says, it's ongoing re reviewing process of um, research integrity regularly and openly. Another perspective on research integrity, a more international one, this is the Singapore Statement on Research Integrity. So similarly, again, honesty in all aspects of research, accountability, professional courtesy and fairness in working, so how you work together with colleagues and um, stakeholders and, um, and others more widely, and good stewardship of research on behalf of others who are looking after it for others for the reputation of it for future generations for the society it serves and gives you some responsibilities there 
in integrity, adherence to regulations, appropriate methods, keeping appropriate research records so you can rely on results, um, publishing the research findings, considerations of authorship and publication, and peer review, a sort of a, a quality assurance of that, conflict of interest, um, reporting and communication, and the environment of research and societal considerations of research. So again, this gives you the breadth of what, what I ought, ought I do, um, the considerations which you could take into account in terms of research integrity. So moving on to the final of the three sort of areas, more in the sort of the place of research in the world, what ought I do in terms of responsible innovation, responsible research and innovation, which I have as overlapping within this. So I consider this and that it's generally the place of research in society and how research and innovation can take care of society as the, the quotes and the definitions there say, taking care of the future through the collective stewardship of science and innovation in the present. That's the definition of responsible innovation, responsible research and innovation. And in more detail, this is a, importantly an interactive process, so um, involving consultation, public engagement, things like this, to make research and innovation that is societally desirable, so asking society what they want, or so whether they accept what the, um, what the outcomes are that, or the course that research, research and innovation is taking, ethical assessment to ensure it's ethically acceptable, so is it, um, is it ethically acceptable for the society in which it's supposed to be implemented, and sustainable, and so this could be sustainable in um, a social way, an economic way, or an environmental way. So these are sort of again three areas of what what you ought to do in terms of responsible research and innovation. So society desirable, ethically acceptable, sustainable. And these are all open to discussion and a lot of work in order to decide what these might actually be and engaging with the society and public to reach that. So to give you some ideas of where to go to and find out more about this, um, the RRI, Responsible Research and Innovation, which is a sort of U European Union policy sort of label and name for responsible innovation, I'd highly recommend the RRI Tools website, which the link is there, um, to give you a, a great introduction and a lot of sort of relevant particular tools to, um, to help you in your own work. And they, the EU, divide um, responsible research and innovation into six pillars. So they talk about focusing on governance, open science so that people can access the, the products and, and processes of science, science education more widely, ensuring sort of um, gender equality and, um, and other elements within that, public engagement um, and also ethical um, reflection on that. And um, this has been adopted by um, UK Research and Innovation, UK and RI, um, and there's a link there to some sort of good useful information and policies um, um, all collected together on one website. And for example, this is Responsible Research Innovation is adopted by the EPSRC, the Engineering and Physical Sciences Research Council, through what's called the Area Framework. So this asks researchers to find processes and anticipate the course of their, their research in terms of its sort of society desirable, reflect on this, um, potentially con consulting and with the public and stakeholders and engaging with them, and then acting accordingly to make sure make that their research is more society design, more, more ethically acceptable and more sustainable. So having a discussion and a, a, a case of um, public engagement with that. And the EPSRC, for example, is now it asks people to who are applying for funding to actually more um, pay more specific attention to these elements of how they're going to deal with the elements of RRI. And uh, at the bottom there is one of the sort of useful sort of reference points which I find of what might be the ways or the goals that we want to align the research with and one particular example there is UN sustainable development goals which I'd encourage you to go and have a look at which are basically 17 goals divided into sub goals which the UN has come together and agreed as being goals for sustainable development to be achieved by 2030 so relation things around sort of poverty reduction environmental elements and gender equality work and, and such things like that so that's a useful reference point if you think all oh, of this is a bit abstract what can I relate my research and work to or what ought I do that might give you some ideas about how you can align your research to a more responsive innovation way so I'm conscious that this has been a very much of sort of a whistle stop tour of very general principles of um, the ethics of research. So to conclusion, what ought I do? Do ethically reviewed research, which um, Sam is going to come on to now, research with integrity, we have high quality, trusted research and responsible research to ensure that it's societally desirable, sustainable and um, ethically acceptable. Um, the next step, I suppose, for your particular research project is to 
apply these principles and look at them in more detail to find out what this means in particular in your particular research context and this as i'm sure you can appreciate is very complicated and varied so ask colleagues discuss with colleagues supervisors go to your um, sort of depart departmental ethics officers or the the resources they provide and that will help you put sort of these ideas in more context of the work you're actually going to be doing and as i say there's lots of resources and help available codes of conduct training courses from universities and um, more widely, for example, the UK um, Research Integrity Office. As I say, very, just a starting point, very brief introduction to some of the issues. And I think just give you at the end, I hope um, we'll find a way of making this um, available for you afterwards. So this is just some of the links I've referred to here of, um, to go and find out more about the policies and the things are particularly related to where I've got these sort of the references from and the, um, the information um, going forward to enable you to think more in more detail about this in relation to your your research and work so with that i will um draw that to a close and um take any questions that you might have if we have i've got a couple of minutes over but we have time to do that <laughs>